This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say uh, their barbecue or their seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is the official barbecue company of the Cary Blue Devils. Uh, their food truck is serving um, the northwestern corners of Ohio. Uh, Harry and the areas around it stretching for miles and miles, uh, visiting breweries and doing, uh, doing all of the great things. Stuart, you got me during an ad read. Congratulations. (laughs) Uh, so you can find, uh, where the mad Canadians food truck will be next by going, Uh, to his social pages, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Uh, Make sure to check out all of the Mad Canadian social pages uh, so you can find out where he is headed to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue company of the Cary Blue Devils. This episode of Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a veteran-owned, small-batch, hand-roasted micro-coffee company all of your orders, all of your orders are re- are roasted fresh to order. They aren't sitting around on a shelf. They aren't sitting around in a truck or in a warehouse for weeks or months on end. You're getting the freshest possible roast you can possibly get. And you're also getting beans made with integrity as they are fair trade certified and USDA organic. It's a veteran owned company. It's an organic company. It's a fair trade company. It's an Ohio company. What else could you possibly want? Maybe some. Maybe you want the coffee to taste good. Well, I'll I'll make you some recommendations in the second half or the uh, second ad read. So stick to uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, or if you don't want to wait for me and you just want to check it out for yourself, you can just go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I can talk about the Murder Coffee Nomad. We can do we can do all the flavored coffees in the next ad read. That's fine by me. This is the secret part of the show, Tony, where we just talk to the YouTube audience and the Discord audience. I like it. Yeah. See the 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 audio people get the music. Uh the video people get these precious 30 seconds where I tell them <clears throat> how to make millions of dollars while working from home and being your own boss. It's like having satellite TV in the 80s. You know, to watch I've commercials. Heard and... I've heard about that where they had the live feeds. The famous Tom Brokaw picking his nose thing that I only know of Dick... because of the Simpsons making a joke about it. Dick Vitale, Colin Lawrence, Funderburg, uh, MF and punk or something of that, that effect when he threw down Damon Bailey on a, on a play back in the day, back in the Good day. times. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kai? Uh, Tony. God, that's that's <laughs> twice it's twice in a row now. I'm I, I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that introduction. Uh, as uh, poor as it was, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Tony Gerdeman of the Buckeye Scoop, formerly of the Ozone, um, knower of good music. Thank you. I appreciate that. I agree. My wife disagrees, but you know. Let's let's leave it at that. I don't want this to become a whole household thing. <laughs> well, that was is that still in your Twitter bio? I know it was for a long time. That's that's where I pulled that. No, from. I think I've probably changed it by now and I'll change it again once they add the tip chart. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to get that. What are they going to use? Bat doge? I, I bet it's not going to be a dollar. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get straight into today's show. Um, we are doing our weekly sloop picks. This is the episode. This is our Friday episode where we pick six games against the line. There is a seventh game, although we broke it down in detail with Mark yesterday during the Thursday Know Your Enemy show. Um, I know I picked uh, Ohio State to cover their 18 and a half. Mark picked Ohio State to pick in his, uh, Ohio State's 18 and a half. Tony, you weren't on that show, so... I'll give you a brief opportunity. Ohio State minus 18 and a half against Penn State. Yeah, I definitely think Ohio State will cover there. I think there's too much offense, not enough offense for Penn State. And those two things just don't go together. So, yeah, I I think I eventually 
I'm going with uh, 41-7. So definitely an easy cover for Ohio State, which sounds a little bit crazy to say in this series. Yeah. Um, I uh, Nomad calls you a homer. Uh, the <laughs> the So 41-7, to seven, is that what you said? Well, yeah. Tom, and we did, Tom and I did our preview show on Thursday. And my thinking is there's going to be a couple field goals. Penn State will hold up in the red zone force a couple of Ohio state field goals. And I just couldn't decide whether or not James Franklin would attempt some field goals, knowing that they are fruitless. However, I've, uh, it was determined that I'm giving him too much credit for not going for field goals and trying to score touchdowns. Tom correctly points out that I'm giving James Franklin too much credit, which I completely agree that I am, that he would do something that was smart in terms of decision-making. So uh, I think maybe 41, 14 is closer, but, I don't know how the how Penn State gets up to like 17 or 20 or anything like that. I'll say this uh, because I want people to go back and listen to the Thursday episode. This is so this is me being a professional YouTuber. My score prediction left Mark speechless. Oh, really? Yeah. See, you're intrigued now, right? I am. I'm good. at. I'll this. just ask Mark. <laughs> I'm not I'm not searching, pressing J and K on my keyboard, fast forwarding stuff on YouTube and. And whatnot, or maybe perhaps I'll just ask you after the show. You know, and then you'll uh, still be like, "No, go to YouTube." There, there is a funny backstory behind that, um, and we might talk about that once, once, uh, once we're no longer recording. Uh, so, all right, first let's let's get into our uh, actual slip picks for this episode. We have Michigan, Michigan State, the battle of the brothers, the little brothers, the big brothers. Uh, we have Michigan ranked six, Michigan State ranked. Uh, eight, and we have Michigan favored by four and a half points. Who do you have, Tony? Well, I, I'm probably in terms of the points. I'm gonna gonna go with Michigan State. I'll take those points. I think Michigan State has the offense and defense to win this game, and they and they should win it. It's at home. It's gonna be the biggest game at Michigan State in, in a long time, and so all of the emotion and all of the reasons are there for it to happen. However, there's just this Michigan thing where right. you know, I don't even know what it is, it, where they just, you know, end up winning ugly. How did they win when they only threw for 127 yards and only rushed for like 180? Yeah. And they could do that same thing in this game. I do like Michigan, uh, Michigan special teams. I think they've got good returners, good punter, good kicker. So maybe that's going to be the difference, a, a field position type of thing. My head says Michigan State wins. The rest of me says, but Michigan is undefeated this season for a reason. And that reason is because the teams they're are playing undefeated. haven't been very good. Yeah. Well, what? I said they're both undefeated. Yes. And the I would I would be all in on Michigan State if it wasn't for that Indiana game, that the 20 to 15 win over Indiana. That concerned me. Right. That showed me that the offense isn't as good as I thought it was. But is Indiana's defense better than Michigan? You know, maybe. Um, I'll be, I, I, I want to see Michigan stop Kenneth Walker. I want to see them stop the, the downfield passing attack of Michigan state. I don't think they can. And yet here I am probably still picking Michigan to win, but I'll take those points and go with Michigan state with the four and a half. Uh, I, I was telling you before we started recording that I have a, uh, a strategy I've been utilizing this, this year when, when doing when, when making these picks and I'm actually, it's we're in, what are we in week eight, week nine? I think it's week nine. And I'm actually still tied with Kyle. And normally at this point, he's left me in the dust. So I'm doing pretty good. My new system is when I don't know, I pick the underdog. Hmm. Um, Cause ultimately who's going to win this game. It's relatively close to a toss up, right? As far as who wins. So if I'm getting points, take the damn points. So I, I do I do lean slightly towards Michigan to win this game, but it's slightly. So if you're going to give me four and a half points to take Michigan State, I'm going to take Michigan State. Well, and I, I look at covers.com right now and it's four, which gives me some pause, gives me more pause than, than four and a half because I, I think I picked this 28-24 Michigan. <laughs> and I, I guess even with that four, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't love this one because I'm talking myself out of taking Michigan State, which, you know, two weeks ago I would have been all in on the Spartans. Right. 
Uh, we do our we have uh, we have an online slip picks that people in our Discord can participate in. Uh, therefore, so it's like an online poll. We do it through CBS. Mm. Not it's not. They were the least bad of a bad of a big batch of bad that you get for free. So that's not that's not an advertisement by any means because it's not great. But it's the best one I could find for free if if you mm. if you're looking for an endorsement. Um, and and here comes everyone saying I. Pull, not pull. I'm from Ohio, and I don't do vowels. Pull, pull, those are the same thing to me. Um, so our numbers get locked in at, like, in Monday. So when the numbers, if the numbers move during the course of the week, we don't get it. So that's, you will sometimes see a discrepancy. Uh, sometimes people will be like, what do you mean you pick this at that point? I'm, it's at this now. And I'm like, yeah, well, CBS locks it in on Monday. Get over it. Hey, I mean, when you lock in your bet, it's not like the thing changes from there. It's that, that's locked in. I do. It is interesting to me that 59% of the money is on Michigan state, according to uh, covers.com. So another, another something there to, uh, to think about the old Scott Van Pelt have always go against the crowd. <laughs> Especially these two crowds. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's 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 jump to the next one. We both pick Michigan State to cover, although we think Michigan will win, to summarize. Uh, next game, Texas versus Baylor. Uh, Battle of the Big 12. Uh, weird recurring theme that we're seeing this week as uh, we have Texas as, as only a two and a half point dog, despite having two less wins uh despite not being ranked and playing like we have some curious uh, i'll say curious if, if the polls and records are to be believed we have some curious uh rankings or some uh curious lines here but uh bottom line is uh we have texas versus baylor this is being played at noon on abc texas is dogged by two and a half which means baylor's favored by two and a half tony who do you have I never like to get involved with Texas football. <laughs> you ne I never know what it's going to be. They have the potential to always do something good and quite often do something bad. I think they're, they're, they're like a conflicted superhero who, I don't know, maybe like Punisher, you know, where, you know, they know they could be doing good. A chaotic but neutral, often, if you will. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, exactly. They're, <laughs> They, they, they need to do more for uh stop doing so much for evil and start doing something for good. And, and you know, Sark has, you know, he, he certainly do, doesn't have Texas back yet. I, I'm not a big fan of what Baylor has been able to do. Um, but, you know, you beat BYU by two touchdowns. You beat West Virginia by, you know, 25. That's not nothing. And so I think Texas is probably setting up to, uh, lose by more than three i'm gonna take baylor i'm gonna lay the points and know that i don't you know it, just betting on texas to me is like betting on any acc game it's like why oh, are you doing God. this or any pac-12 game you know like you should know better and generally i do but when i'm forced into it you know, here i'm gonna go uh, uh i'm gonna take baylor and lay those points so you say not to bet uh acc games but one of the reasons why my I'm actually doing well in the slip picks this year is because I, I made a lot of theoretical dollars betting against Clemson. Well, <laughs> back no, when they were that, back when they were relevant enough to put in the slip mm -hmm. picks. Yes, no, that is correct. Betting against Clemson and their offense and the unders and all of that stuff completely. Yeah, that is very acceptable. That's not so much betting the ACC that's betting Clemson though. You, is, is that sort of like, I don't live in, <laughs> I don't live in Ohio. I live in Columbus. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I think uh, I look at Texas. I look at Baylor. Uh, I don't like, I'm with you. I don't like either of these teams. If I was betting actual money on this, I wouldn't. Uh, so I, I look, we have a, a recent common opponent with Oklahoma state. It's a game that both of these teams lost. So, and they both lost by relatively same amount of points. So that's not super helpful. Um, Baylor's actually winning games this year. Texas is not. I I don't know what to do with this game. I feel like it's a bit of a, a toss up. You have a team that's performing well, but arguably really hasn't played um, 
I don't think BYU is actually good. I don't think Oklahoma State is actually good. So I see I, I see a team that's winning against bad teams, and I see a Texas team that has lost uh, a really a, t- a, t- a pair of really tough games. I think they're talented. I think they just need to get it together. I I don't know, so I'm picking the underdog. It's this is this is the system. This Gotta is the stick system, with the system, and it's working. It's I respect not, that. Stewart, it is not the transitive property. It's a common opponent. That is that is different. Comparing common opponents is not the transitive property. All right. Uh, the system better not fail me this week because that's not the last time I'm going to use it. All right. Next up, uh, we have Iowa and we have Wisconsin. Uh, Let's see. We have Iowa ranked number nine, Wisconsin having a second consecutive unfortunate season, uh, unranked coming in at four and three. Unranked, two more losses than Iowa have looked really just downright incompetent at times. Wisconsin has favored by three and a half. I said there were some curious lines. That one's maybe the most curious. Well, and the it's the I think it's the lowest under I've ever seen over under of thirty six and a half, wow. and you're like, well, that that's insane. But then it's like, well, tell me how they score twenty. You know, how, how does how does this game these two teams score thirty seven points in a game? And I don't know how they do because even if they go eight overtimes, <laughs> damn it, you beat what's that? Ten points, you know. So well, and there's a the thing: Wisconsin favored by three and a half. If it goes to overtime again. You know, you're probably looking at like a two point game or something like that. And so um, this one, I don't know how they move the ball, how they score. To me, it comes down to who throws the most pick sixes, who turns the ball over most in the other team's territory. And if you're asking me to pick quarterbacks, I'm going to pick Spencer Petras over Graham Mertz. But I might pick Wisconsin's defense over Iowa's defense. And so there's just a lot of it's just. Two, it's basically a rock fight, just smashing rocks and seeing what happens and get some shards in your eye. And it's like, well, that's what you get when you're watching this game. You're going to get shards in the eye. So I'm probably, and I guess this has to be absolutely rather than probably since we're talking about it, I'm going to go with the two thirds of the betters here. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take those points because this is probably like, maybe, maybe it's a 2018 game and that's how the over wins in like three overtimes, four overtimes. Just, just for the record, Tony is officially predicting four overtimes. That's, that's exactly what he said. Officially. <laughs> officially. Um, Stuart asks, do they have common opponents? Well, I'm glad you asked Stuart. Both of them played Purdue in their last games. Cause that's how by, that, that's how bye weeks work. Both, both, both teams. Most recent opponent is Purdue. It's fun how that works out. It's not transit property. <laughs> Funny how that works out sometimes. Uh, Wisconsin beats Purdue 30 to 13. Uh, Iowa famously lost to Purdue. Uh, as we as we titled as we titled that uh, Tuesday episode, uh, Iowa gets Purdued because never never play Purdue when you're good and they're okay. That's just that's not a winning strategy. Never do it. So if we if we go purely off of the most recent common opponent being Purdue, it seems obvious to me that we pick Wisconsin here. I'm not doing it though. I, I'm picking Iowa. So I, zero chance in hell. Zero chance in hell. I'm picking Wisconsin with you know as a favorite. There, there's zero chance in hell. I'm picking Wisconsin as a favorite against any. Ba- I don't. I don't think I'd take them as a favorite against Illinois right now. Well, I. I'm glad you were going that way because I was getting worried <laughs> that you were going to base your decision on something that Purdue has done, which is that, you know, that's like you know, getting a philosophy degree. Like, what's the point of that? That's foolish. And so I'm glad that you, you did that and that you have come around and, you know, this is going to be a For very record, big game. Though, I think, or I think a couple people at Ohio state lost their jobs based off of a Purdue game. So. <laughs> and, and rightfully so. <laughs> Um, but the, the Wisconsin, if Wisconsin wins this, now you've got a situation where what Minnesota is in control of its own destiny. And then Minnesota plays Wisconsin to end the season. 
in Minnesota and you could have like a three-way tie and who knows what that looks like with the tiebreaker. So maybe it's just best that Iowa wins this and just tries to stay. Um, I, I don't know if I want this West to be any messier than it already is. I mean, you, you kind of, and like I'm, I'm team. It doesn't matter when all your games in regards to Ohio state and oh, yeah, to the playoffs. Sure. Um, but like, why not have a decently ranked team in the championship game? Cause it could affect seeding. I mean, it probably won't because I don't see Ohio State being fourth or first. So I feel like they're going to either be two or play two when it's all said and done. Um, and, but, and but, but Ohio State and Oregon, you just never know. Yeah. yeah. And if Ohio State and Oregon are close together, you want as many quality wins for the Buckeyes as possible. Because if, if they're looking head to head, that's not the best sign for the Buckeyes. Right. By the way, you have like on two or three separate occasions answered someone's question before i had a chance to actually ask you uh gangland asked uh if whiskey wins what does that do to the west uh someone asked is texas back like you're you're, you're hitting some of the, i'm about to ask you a question and you're nailing it before i ever get a chance to so that's that's why you're tony you know you haven't i don't know if you know anything about discord servers um you know i we used to you have, have you have discord your own emote thing. in our discord server that's how popular you are in our we have a Tony Gerdeman I, emote in our Discord. I don't server. know what that means, but that's I'm, okay. It's an it's, it's I'm an honored. Honor. It's an honor. You should feel honored, honored. appalled, frightened, <laughs> thrilled. Uh, all right. Uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, third game down. Before we keep going, yep. And and we're now getting. They unfortunately aren't going to show up in the uh, video here on the group chat, but we are currently getting some uh, spams of the Tony Gerdman emote in the chat. Is that spam? Okay. Um, it's it's just an internet thing. It's just like it's a spamming. Just means that it's getting repeated a lot. That that's can't you just not... say control pasted and like you know or control V or copy pasted? Like why why do you have a negative connotation to it? I, I didn't invent the word other Tony. than the fact that it's annoying. I didn't invent the word, Tony. That's, that's just the terminology. When, when mm. a single emote is getting repeated in a chat, we call it spamming. I didn't invent it. Yet you say we, we as the internet community say they at least deflect some blame. I'm, no, I'm, I'm way too involved in the internet community to, <laughs> to act like I'm not, partially responsible this people episode, through you anyway <laughs> this episode of the sloopcast is brought to you by the iron bean coffee company i had a request in the chat from our buddy nomad to talk about some of the flavored coffees so i'm going to do exactly that as i talk slowly as i pull up the website uh let's see let's talk about some of these flavored coffees we have a salted caramel mocha. Uh, you have the unicorn, which is the mystery flavor. You have no idea what it's going to be until you get it. And even then you might have to guess. Uh, there's the vanilla hazelnut. Uh, the cinnamon roll uh, still sold out, but they have uh, they have restocked the bananas foster. So good news there. Uh, the peanut butter chocolate buckeye is there. The uh, butter pecan is there. Uh, the mom's carrot cake, I regret to inform you, still sold out. But the mint chocolate chip, the... Irish grog and the intense blueberry uh, are as always available. And then let's not forget uh, the backroom coffees. These are the murder coffees. Uh, there is the cereal killer, which is a vanilla butter coffee. The stay awake, which actually isn't flavored, I don't think, but it's just insanely caffeinated. So you got that going for you. The bloodbath, which is a red velvet cake coffee. Uh, the turning blue, which is a blueberry crumble coffee. And then the solace. You want to, Tony, do you want to, you want to guess what the Solace is flavored like? Black licorice. Oh, no, that would be, that would be, oh no, no, it's ginger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no one likes anise. No, you, you're not going to sell any coffee doing that. Uh, so that that is all of the coffees available. Those are all the flavored coffees available to you. There's an exotics page and there's the, all the, the, 
regular non-flavored dark roast and medium roast that they have to offer, which we always talk about on the show. But uh, we're out of time in this ad read, so you can find it for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based barbecue company, uh, part food truck, part catering. Uh, he's, I think he's planning on getting those spices back up here soon. Um, so what, what all do they offer over at Mad Canadian Barbecue Company? They have ribs, which are not your standard ribs. They're actually maple glazed. I don't know if glazed is the right word. There's maple. All right. Don't, don't, don't come after me, Mad Canadian, if it's not technically a glaze, but it's, uh, they're, they're sweet maple ribs. Uh, there's also, they have pork and they have brisket. Uh, they have sides that include potato salad and coleslaw, baked beans, I'm forgetting one, but that's okay. Let's let's take a look at um uh, let's take a look at a at a random review. I'm scrolling through the page uh the Facebook page. Let's see. Trace says I ordered some pulled pork coleslaw and corn for a family lunch and holy crap, was it awesome? The slaw wasn't runny or or overly creamy, and the way it was seasoned was great. Slaw, I uh, is the greatest slaw. I'm 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 editing this as I'm reading it, Tony. For the record, um, you know, Facebook, it's they they proofread they proofread as much as I do on Twitter. Um, uh, in a long time, corn was fresh, plenty of spices, fresh green onion on top. Uh, finally, the pork was absolutely fantastic. Uh, a smoky flavor to it. Uh, very juicy, not at all dry. Incredibly tender. Uh, she. I feel, trace uh, they we'll say they I'm not sure uh, uh, plan to have TMC cater their next event and you can too uh, you can find the Mad Canadian on well uh, you're you're right Austin excuse me it's it's not Facebook anymore it's it's Meta now uh, <laughs> be, because uh, but you can reach out to the Mad Canadian on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, to find out where he will be next. And, uh, if you could maybe have him cater your own event. So once again, find the Mad Canadian on your social page of choice and make sure to tell him the Sloopcast sent you, uh, Mad Canadian barbecue company, the official barbecue company of the Cary Blue Devils. Meta. It's called, Facebook is called Meta now, Tony. This is the news of the day. Well, I know you say you're of the internet, but it's still going to be Facebook. It's just Meta is the company that you know, yeah, yeah, the company yeah, yeah, yeah. behind Facebook. So it's I mean, kind of like how not Google to correct is, you. You're not correcting me. Um, <laughs> Google is like owned by Alphabet, right? And which is just Google. They just spun off a parent company to own all the other companies, and that's that's all Facebook is doing. It's not it's not a big deal. But, you know, why not make fun of Facebook when given the chance? Also, I would argue well, that despite the fact that Facebook is on the Internet, it is not of the Internet. Hmm, fair. Will my uncle still be able to send uh, random? Yes. OK, thank you. <laughs> Are you sure you want to be thanking me? I just now I know not to get back on it. That's all. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. All right, uh, let's get back into the football. Next up, we have Florida and we have Georgia, a game that they refuse to play in a college stadium because it doesn't mean more, apparently. I hate neutral site games. I hate them with a passion. Uh, but we have number one Georgia playing uh, Austin's soon-to-be alma mater. Uh, so yeah, let's uh let's take a look at this game. Georgia fourteen and a half favored by fourteen and a half coming in seven and zero versus Florida's four and three. Who do you have, Tony? Well, I agree. I hate neutral site games. I don't like the one offs. I didn't like Ohio State TCU. I hate what Alabama does. Play the games on campus. Stop giving money to suits. Let the people enjoy a campus environment and have the suits get their money that way from the crazy prices on tickets. This one is kind of a strength versus strength. Uh, you get Florida, the number four rushing offense in the nation. I think Georgia's the number two rush defense in the nation. So can Florida get some big plays like they did against Alabama? 
they're going to have to, but Georgia doesn't give up any big plays. I think they've given up six plays of 30 yards or more all season and only two of 40 yards, nothing further than that. So Florida's going to have to hit some big plays in the passing game, I think. And they throw more interceptions than Graham Mertz at a, you know, seven hours into a, a wedding reception. Like, you know, a hammered Graham Mertz doesn't throw as many interceptions as the Florida Gators. And I, there's only one team in the nation that's thrown more interceptions. So it can be Emory Jones. It can be Anthony Richardson out there. And either one of them is good to throw two or three interceptions in the game, but can one of those guys, you know, the whole lightning in a bottle thing. I, I still feel like this is going to be Georgia by 17 or something. I don't know how Florida scores, but you know, maybe, maybe this is where we find more out about Georgia, their offense, their defense, and maybe, Maybe they get exposed a little bit, but I'm not going to expect Florida to do, to do anything like that, especially if Dan Mullen's looking at Penn State. Who knows? Who's to say? You know, maybe. We'll see, but I'm going to go Georgia. Are you saying a distracted coach could potentially I'm, be I'm good saying for I heard Dan Mullen talking about Illinois. Yeah, Dan Mullen was saying he's just he's just focused on Illinois, so we'll see. All right, so I have Buckeye Esquire in the chat, and I have Austin in the chat. Uh, one's a, a Georgia grad, and the other one is a soon-to-be Florida grad. Uh, I think I'm going to let them fight to the death, and then I'll pick that team. Hey, guys, could you, in, in like 30 seconds? No, okay. Uh, Florida, I think, has, uh, if, you, if you wanted to put like an upset on this, like what, what, one out of ten. What what type of upset um, are we are we looking for this game? Uh, like one out of ten. Is it zero or one? I guess completely impossible or ten straight up watch. No, I I think maybe a two and a half out of ten. That's I, I think you, there's Nomad. there's a possibility. I think it can happen. I'm not. I don't expect it to happen, but. I mean, I didn't expect Kansas to take Oklahoma to the brink and everything this season has been pretty much you know, not what we expected. And so there's no reason this can't other, you know, it just has to be perfect execution on Florida's part. No turnovers, hit some big plays, complete some passes that they haven't really been completing that, that well, and then have Florida or Georgia maybe turn the ball over a little bit and have their, their offense stifled. And again, I think field position helps in this one as well. Yeah. It, this 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 is an SEC game that I think is going to look and feel a lot like a Big Ten game. Um, yeah. The uh, Buckeye Scar wants me to point out uh, that it was only his law school alma mater. That that's he 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 wanted me to point it out. Um, we had a we have a guest picker for the show by the way. He did get our uh, picks in a little bit late, so I forgot to put him in the show notes because he got them to me a little late. But ultimately, it's still my fault. So um, Buckeye Zach. Uh, he has uh, Baylor in the first game. Um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I scratched my head wondering where Bar Baylor came from while I nod towards Texas, knowing they will never be back. Uh, this will be a classic Big 12 shootout, or either team could wake up and run away with it. Uh, then he takes Baylor. Um, in the Wisconsin game, he says, three weeks ago, we were all wondering if Iowa... Um, with a uh, with that defense could be one of the uh, one to challenge the Buckeyes. Then Purdue came to play, and Wisconsin says nope to Purdue. Uh, so wins for everyone. I got Iowa in a classic, ugly beat 'em up game. Uh, and for the Florida game, he says, uh, could Florida test Georgia like Bama did? Maybe if they had uh, any offense, give me Georgia's defense and their running game, and we'll call it a game. So. Got caught up. Was, on the, that. I, was the Iowa Wisconsin classics in the quotations, or is that no? But no nope classics. Was. Okay. Uh, which you know grammatically, and Wisconsin says nope to Purdue. It, it did make it did make good grammatic sense for it to be there. Grammatical sense. God, that's a, that's not a sentence you want to mess up. <laughs> Irony. Uh, all right. So that's it for Georgia, Florida. Uh, next up, we have Ole Miss and we have Auburn. Uh, we have Ole Miss coming into this game ranked 10. Auburn somehow ranked 18th. Not sure how that's 
legally allowed. Um, but this is, again, Tony, one of our weird lines for this week, because I said we have a few, uh, despite being 10 spots behind them and with an extra loss in their pocket, we have Auburn minus two and a half. I like Ole Miss's quarterback better. I like their offense as a whole better. And I just not a fan of Auburn. Um, it seems wild that we can get Ole Miss and the points. Do you agree? You know, that's a good point because, because I also like Ole Miss. I, I am a, a fan of just watching them. I'm a fan of what they do on offense. And obviously everybody's a fan of Lane Kiffin and I'm not a fan of any of that stuff for Auburn. And it can be a chore to watch them. And, and I don't I haven't really watched them much this year, other than to see people complaining about them on Twitter. I did watch, I think I probably watched some of that Penn state game and really Auburn hasn't done like they haven't done anything special other than be in the sec west exactly and maybe maybe old miss is in that same boat but at least they're fun to watch you know so but but then even you know old miss has had some issues of late yeah they've won their last three but you know it's arkansas it's tennessee it's lsu and you know they've got two ranked opponents left so now is the time to sort of let people know that we are a new year six bowl team or something like that or you know if if Alabama loses again, maybe they can sneak in there and into the SEC championship game. I mean, they're still alive for the playoffs, and they would be a fun opponent for somebody. But, yeah, I am i don't like siding with Auburn when you never know. Like, the offense is – it's a begrudging offense. It's like, fine. Bo Nix will take care of it. Don't worry. Somehow. And like, I don't know doesn't. that he will. And yeah, exactly. So it's like when the uh, parents assume the kids are going to clean up, you know, as they go out for dinner or whatever, and they they come back and nothing has been cleaned up. It's like, well, what'd you expect? Right. So yeah, I'll I'll take uh, I'll take those points and I'll watch Ole Miss win out. Right. Yeah, I I agree. Ole Miss for the win and I the upset, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, Austin making some good points over here in the chat. Uh, he wants me to point out that Auburn. Uh, lost to Georgia Southern um, and that uh, Bo Nix is bad. And then because Austin's been listening to us for so long, he says uh, he he basically telegraphed what I was going to say to, to wrap this up. He says, when in doubt, pick the quarterback, especially when you can also get the two points. Jared's two rules collide. Yeah. Austin, do you want to, do you want, do you want the chair? It's going to have Austin fill in for me next time I have to miss an episode. Uh, all right. Yeah. So we, we both pick Ole Miss to win and uh, cover. Next up, we have Kentucky and we have Mississippi State. I have two Mississippi. I have two schools for Mississippi in the slew picks. What the hell is going on? What the hell is wrong with me? And even worse than that, I'm going to pick both of them. <laughs> Mississippi State is favored by half of a point. So we're basically just doing a pick them here. Um, again, another curious line, Mississippi state favored by half a point, despite being four and three and unranked versus Kentucky at six and one and ranked 12. It feels like anytime you start to believe in Mississippi state, they just let you down. Like, can they, can they stay with it? Can state, can they stay with Alabama? No, it's 49, nine. And you know, there's whenever, Mike Leach is kind of like Ricky Bobby's dad. When things are going too well, he has to ruin it. Or like when you put too much faith in him, he has to let you down and cause a scene at Applebee's. And I guarantee you, Mike Leach has caused some scenes at Applebee's as I think about it now. Um, So uh, yeah, this one is curious to me as well. Mississippi state has lost to Memphis. They've lost to LSU. Who have they beaten? I mean, I guess North Carolina state is a good win. Um, obviously at Texas A&M kind of caught everybody by surprise. I think Texas A&M was maybe you know, not yeah. with it at that point. Kentucky though, like, do you really want to put too much stock in them? And they're an SEC East team. So probably not, but I'm also not, I'm not of the, the Mississippi state. I'm a, I'm an old miss person. So as I talk around it, I'm going to take Kentucky because They've just shown me more, not that they've shown me a lot, but they haven't been as disappointing at times as Mississippi State. And, you know, I understand it's tough to play in Starkville, but it's not 
that tough. Yeah, is it? <laughs> the cowbells are annoying. But Austin wants me to point out that he he believes that uh, he's more of a Chili's guy. Uh, personally, I think it's Denny's. I think you're both giving him too much credit. I think it caps out at about Denny's or maybe now that he's in the South Waffle House. Well, I think it depends. Denny's is like an after game, as you're saying now, Waffle House is after game. Applebee's Chili's, that's before the game. That's a Sunday dinner. You, <laughs> you get dressed up. You Maybe maybe you have a collar. Yeah. A collared shirt. Uh, you may or may not invite the wife. I don't know. Just depends on, did you lose the game before? Did you win it? And maybe that lets you know who who all comes with you. But Chili's, Applebee's, you know. Uh, we now have a Perkins I, suggestion. In the, the, you might be right. Iron Skillet, something like that. Yeah. Cracker Barrel. Oh. Now we're that, talking breakfast, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's also like suit and tie at that point. Yes. If you can get a seat. Of course, of course. No, no, no I, don't, I don't think they have Bob Evans. E- uh, either in Washington or Mississippi. I don't know if they stretch that far. I'll tell you what, though. We were in Bloomington last week, and we had a Texas Roadhouse across from the hotel. The line to that Texas Roadhouse, you know, like these service roads and all of these industrial parks where, mm-hmm. you know, that are you got hotels, you got a restaurant here. There are cars parked on the street for this Texas Roadhouse. And was it good? Of course it was. We yeah, went yeah. and we we sat at the bar, watched a little bit of the Illinois Penn State game, the Kansas Oklahoma game. I don't know if it was forty five minute wait good for everybody else, but you know, it, I guess there's not a lot of options there in Bloomington. There was that, and there was a Cheddar's down the street, and the Cheddar's was also packed. Yeah, if you stop near the uh, Cabela's, like I recommended, you could possibly do on your way through what I call the Ohio Valley. Um, on your way to New Jersey, you, there was also a Cheddar's there. <laughs> so if anyone has a Cheddar's, uh, just, just go to the, there, there's a uh, Cabela's west, of, or excuse me, east of Wheeling. and it's, it, Does don't, Cabela's? Don't make the, but don't make the drive for it. <laughs> can you eat at Cabela's like you can Ikea? Because isn't it like, it's like a hunting Ikea. I mean, is there food there other than like beef jerky? At that one, you can. Um, I know that the Cabela's that is east of Wheeling is like a, like I know, like there's a Cabela's in the uh, up in Polaris. It's nothing like the one, the one in West Virginia is like a super duper Cabela's. Anyway, yeah, country roads exactly. <laughs> uh, I I sorry, a, a very important question popped up in the chat um, from Stuart. Uh, best steak chain. You know, I'm the wrong guy to ask because I, I never buy steak out. I never buy steak <laughs> I mean, out. I, I can no. I feel like I can do it just fine by myself. Yeah. And and really the it all tastes the same and it's all overpriced to me. So that's uh, just how I feel about it. I see you lost me on that one. You lost me on that one. Um let's see uh guest picker Buckeye Zach. Uh Kentucky or Mississippi State, I flipped a coin. <laughs> Kentucky was heads. The other was tails. Uh, Kentucky wins. Fair enough. Uh, next game and last game. No, wait, no that was the last game. Oh, that's uh, I confused myself because I had Ohio State in the show notes as they were last night. So, no, that, that's it. That's all of our games. Uh, we do have some Ask Sloopcast questions to address. Um, as soon as I find them. As soon as I find them, I'm just going to fill some dead air by talking. Uh, let's see. We have from Austin. If Tony, I, I, By the way, I'm just reading these blind, so apologies in advance if necessary. <laughs> I told everyone to be on their best behavior, which, of course, means that they will do the opposite because. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if Tony could accept a head coaching position at any school, not Ohio State, which would he choose and why? Hmm. That's a good one. I, I've always liked Georgia and I think being in the SEC East, you have an opportunity to do well there. It's good recruiting base. Nick Saban won't be at Alabama forever. LSU always hires crazy coaches and yeah, they win, but they're gone eventually. And they're not really a threat. Like I think Georgia is kind of a sleeping giant and what this is the first time since 1982, they've been ranked number one. So maybe Maybe Georgia, although, you know what? 
I've got an affinity for uh, North Texas <laughs> because of my NCAA football video game days. You know, that was one of my, my dynasties, I think 2004. And, you know, still Denton, Texas will always hold a special place in my heart. So Austin didn't he Austin addressed this question straight to you, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Controversial Michigan. Follow me on this. I'm in no way qualified to be a, a head coach in college football. Therefore, I would no, 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 no. Do not get mad at me yet. Exactly. I would try like I have integrity. I would try to do well. I have no, I have no experience. I have no skill in this area. I would do, I would try and do good. I really, really would, but I would suck. Why, why would I be a good football coach? Dude, and then Michigan sure will suck even rings. worse. Yeah. Uh, another one from Austin. What is more likely two big 10 teams in the playoffs or since he gets a top two seed, he, he threw, he threw a dodge, a dodgeball. Uh, a curveball on that one. I was expecting the two Big Ten or two SEC question. He he curved it. So how does the Big Ten get two in? Is it two from the East, I guess, or does Iowa win out and beat Ohio State? Uh, presumably, the most likely, at least based off of records, would be Ohio State and Michigan, or Michigan State for that matter, depending upon who wins mm -hmm. this game. So you have a one loss. Michigan loses a close game against Ohio state. Ohio state goes on, wins the big 10 championship. And you have Michigan sitting there with a relatively good loss because, you know, we get to play by sec rules now, right? They have a really good loss and maybe sneak their way into the playoffs. And Georgia's number one, Cincinnati by being undefeated would be higher than Ohio state or Michigan. So aren't they, maybe they're all the same likeliness because it would take everything to happen for Cincinnati to be that number two. So well, no, I, if Ohio I, but, state wins out, beats Michigan, wins the big 10 in a scenario in which it's either them or Cincinnati that gets the number two, it would be Ohio state. But since it's two and three playing each other, is this an opportunity for the committee to here you go, Cincinnati, you are our number two team. Mm. here's your you know here's your trophy here's your prize we respect you right and it would be no different than three or two or, or whatever so maybe they would just do that as a a nod and a wink because they would never do it in reality exactly um gangland i'm not going to read that one uh <laughs> or excuse me that was austin that said that the thing shifted on me um Next question, uh, last one. Well, maybe not the last one, but another one from Austin. Uh, if Georgia wins out but loses in the SEC title game to Bama, do they both get in over an undefeated Oklahoma, undefeated Cincy, a one-loss Oregon, and a one-loss OSU? Yeah, I think they're both in over... And I think Cincinnati is going to continue to drop. I think Cincinnati and Oregon are going to be rooting very hard against Ohio State the rest of the way out. And Oregon. Oh, yeah, and Ohio State and Cincinnati will have two common opponents. Right now, it already does not look good for Cincinnati, so they're going to have to do something to Tulsa. And they're not going to have the schedule that Ohio State has. So I expect Cincinnati to continue to drop. And really, there's not much they can do. They'll, be, they'll have to beat Tulsa or – um SMU twice, and that will knock SMU out of the ranking. So it's not like they'll have any ranked wins other than Notre Dame. And, and so they're they're at a disadvantage for sure. And and I think if if Alabama beats Georgia, those two are in like they might be one two, regardless of what anybody else does, other than Oklahoma. And so what, like Georgia, Bama, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma being the three if they go undefeated, and Oregon. I, I I've said it since the time they lost. The committee is never beholden to head to heads. And no. if Y state continues to play like they are and Oregon continues to play like they are, you know, the committee is going to do what they want. And I think they'd rather have Ohio state in there than Oregon. Yeah. And right or wrong. I think they look at recruiting classes. They, I think they know where the talent is. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that plays a bigger role in any of this than I think anyone wants to acknowledge. 
Uh, from Matthew OSU, when will Tony and Tom resort to physical violence on the Bold Prediction Show? You know, when we do them <laughs> in person, I am getting... It's it's an exhausting show. It really is. I, and I know you probably haven't listened to it or watched it. but I, Yeah, we, we've talked it, about that. I can't. Yeah, and it's basically we come up with our, these seven bold predictions and then we just negotiate stuff down. It's like, well, you know, I like you've got five one point predictions, a two pointer and a three pointer. And my three pointer was like Travion Henderson will rush for three for 200 yards. And he's like, no, I need at least 225. And then, you know, then we spend like five minutes. I'm like, ah, 212. And then we just whittle it down. It's, it's tremendous. Listen, as we just, you know, pawn star ours, ourselves into um, a fever pitch and it's exhausting. It, it really, it's, it's ruining the relationship, honestly, yeah. if, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Especially um, when I lose. Yeah. All, uh, Kyle and I being close in the slope picks, like we've traded the lead a few times. That's, that's not healthy for us, but uh, you know, it it's is fun for everybody is. else. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, and just following the chat here, just in case anyone watching or listening, Tony can't see the chat. Um, Cause you have to be in our discord server to be able to see the chat, but um, they're a fan of those episodes from what I'm seeing in the, uh, in the live chat here. We get good feedback. It's like uh, you know, the, the, the demon kids that like to see their parents fight. <laughs> and so they'll just start fires and stuff like literal fires. Um, Austin, who is going to win the most prestigious award of them all the Heisman Tony. I really like CJ Stroud's chances, but it feels like it's first. We have to see what Alabama's quarterback is doing that year. But don't forget about Oklahoma. He started one game and he was getting Yahoo write-ups. Yeah. And he had a bit of a down game against Kansas and then makes two incredible plays to win that game. And then he's right back in it. And, and I, I loved what I saw from Caleb Williams and those two plays were picking up a fourth down on one run and then taking the ball away on another. That's insane awareness to me, but he shouldn't be a candidate. No, like not at all. And so then it's one start anyway. Do we, can we have that conversation in November? Maybe. Yeah. But I mean, you you only play half a season. They would never allow a running back to do that. No. So let's not buy into it. Never allow a defense. No, they would never allow any defensive player, but um, you know, I guess I don't think it's going to be Matt Corral. Because he plays at Ole Miss. And because so it's not just only me, do you have to be a quarterback nowadays, you also have to be the quarterback of a playoff team. Mm-hmm. That, so, that, so there you go. Yeah, it's the, the right. it's getting so stupid. I, I it's Bryce Young and it's CJ Stroud and you know and Williams. It, it's annoying. It, it's it's been I think for me, I I when Orlando Pace didn't win it or wasn't even like uh Chase you know top Young two even. or whatever. And exactly Chase Young. He was the best player in the nation by far. And the voters have an opportunity they, to really reestablish the award, but they're just resting on their laurels. It's like, no, it has to be a quarterback. Maybe it's a running back if they're really good. Or what well, we saw with Devontae Smith, like if you are so far and above everybody, as long as you're not on defense. And you touch the Then ball. we can talk. Yeah. And so, yeah, Tom and I have the show uh, – the editorial stance on, on our show is that it's, you know, it's, it's a joke award, even though it is, you know, you talk about it because we talk about college football, but don't give it any more meaning than it deserves. That's shown. It doesn't deserve much. The only time Kyle and I ever talk about the Heisman is when someone asks a question hmm. uh, from nomad. Should USC target a college coach and NFL coach or a non established guy who is on the up and up? They should definitely get somebody on the up and up. Right. You don't want to get a dirty guy. No. Um, you know, James Franklin, I've heard him like I've talked to an NFL guy who has talked to his people who have talked to people at Penn State and they think that he's he's gone. Like if, if USC offers, he's gone. And it sure seems like he's been so distracted right now that he has been offered something and has accepted it. No, he's focused so on I, Illinois, Tony. That's all well and good, but I don't think it's going to work. And so, yeah, I, I kind of. I've been thinking he's been gone for a while now, for about a month now. And this entire ordeal and episode, these last five or six days has convinced me now I I, would LSU suit him better. I don't know. I think the biggest question then comes, who does Penn state go to Luke fickle, Jeff Halfley, Matt rule. Yeah. um, You know, Matt Campbell. 
I think they're going to get somebody who can do what James Franklin did and, and maybe do it better because Franklin can recruit, but he just game management is terrible such an issue manager. for him. Yeah. He's a terrible game manager. Um, I, I think he was the right guy to get Penn state from where they were to where they are now, but now they need someone mm-hmm. else to take them from where they are now to where they want to be. Um, yep. if he's that not elite. Sense. No, he's very good, but he's not elite. Uh, that, that was a good post game rant. Um, the, uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, who is the most overrated current top 15 team? I don't, I don't have the poll up either. Yeah. I'm give it, give us a second to uh, bring that up. Uh, I don't want to say Iowa, but Kentucky, I think is a good candidate for that. Who are you taking against Kentucky and Iowa? Or who would you take? Because I think I would even take Wake Forest against those teams because of their offense. Oklahoma State. Mm. Texas A&M is not, I mean, not good. I don't think Michigan State's all that good. I don't think that Oklahoma State's all yeah. that good. I don't think, I, if we're if we're also weighting this by how high up in yes, the top correct. 15 they are, it's Mi- Michigan State. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I respect everything Mel Tucker has done. Yeah, nine and three is probably the 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 tip of what they should be this year. So to already be seven and zero, oh, agreed. Congratulations, absolutely. Uh, enjoy your partying gifts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, amazing job, great season. They've already done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, another one from Nomad. Who wins the Big Ten West? Uh, I was talking with tom about that we recorded a morning morning scoop and he asked me that same thing and i said please don't ask me that because <laughs> it's like minnesota right now is it, it could be leading by the end of the weekend i picked iowa to start the season so i'm gonna stay there but if i mean if wisconsin wins this i don't see minnesota staying at one loss Minnesota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa could all finish with two losses. I don't know what the tiebreaker is in there because the round robin, they've beaten each other. But I will still say Iowa somehow because, you know, do do you think Wisconsin and Minnesota stay at two losses? No. No, I don't. I think. think And I don't know anybody does, but. It's going to turn into a big mess over there. And I think I was the only team I think really has the potential to not turn into yeah but uh by the way nomad wants me to point out or he at least sarcastically says it's like i listened to the scoop or something so i think he heard you yeah that that was that was a that was a coordinated attack um if brian kelly goes to usc is fickle uh an autofill at notre dame i think you already alluded that that was a possibility if franklin goes to usc i have been told and i'll let you tell me if you have heard the same thing Fickle has a list of three schools that he would realistically want to leave Cincinnati for, which is Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Penn State. Is that is that accurate based off of what you know? Uh, uh, not based. I mean, I've heard similar things. And do I know that? No, but I have heard that. And yeah. so I, I think you leave Cincinnati for either of the, for any of those jobs. They're Midwestern enough, local enough, similar towns, similar places. And we know that he loves Ohio and he, he is comfortable doing what he's doing. I don't see him as a Los Angeles guy at all. I think he would be miserable there. And this is a guy that can be miserable where he is now. You know, it's like the the first year is, is very tough and that you're rebuilding everything and it sucks and you don't see your family, but then eventually you get stuff established. And any of those three jobs are kind of, you know, they're, they're ready-made, they're built and you could step in and, you know, the kids are getting older and yeah, I, I think any of those three. And then the question is, does Notre Dame want Luke Fickle? Do they want Matt Campbell? Would Matt Campbell go? Is he waiting? For, you know, I've, I've heard he would never take the Michigan job. I've heard he would, I've heard he's, you know, I have, would have obviously taken the Ohio state job, but. Uh, are you talking about Campbell or Fickle? Matt, Matt Campbell. Oh, okay. I I I, ha- I just sort of floated that question out there once, you know, would Fickle actually take the Michigan or Michigan State job? And I've been friendly with a couple Buckeye parents on Twitter, 
And I got multiple DMs saying Fickle would never, ever coach for either of those schools. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I agree. And my question is, would, would Campbell and Campbell's an Ohio guy as well. And, and Mount union and Toledo and all of that. And I've heard he would not take the Michigan job. Um, I don't know if that's just because who, who really wants to be in the same division with Ohio state at this point. I think I, I wonder if Ohio state is going to do the same thing to the big 10 East that uh, Alabama's done to the sec West, which is kind of turned it into a bit of a shit show because everyone is expected to beat Bama and Saban is Saban. I do think ever since Urban Meyer arrived, the 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 talent of the coaching has risen in the Big Ten. He brought the Big Ten up. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and if you don't keep up, like Ryan Day has, has continued to do his thing. And if you think, you know what, we can just get by with Danny Hope, you should just give up football at that point. Right. Uh, let's see. Who is the most underrated group of five team? Um, what about Brady Hoke's San Diego take San Diego state, San Diego state Aztecs undefeated. Okay, you know? so, Hey, that's good enough to get you into the top 10 and a certain someone's top 25. Um, you got all these Texas schools, Texas, San Antonio, uh, all the road runners. I'm, I'll go with the road runners. I've never, I've not seen one snap. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Matthew OSU. Uh, does undefeated ACC champ Wake Forest have a better claim at the college football than Ohio? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not even, Tony, you can sit this one out, buddy. I got it. No, <laughs> you know how we know this is a crazy season. Uh, we are looking forward to Wake Forest pit. You know, like what, if they're in the, the ACC championship game, like that's an important game. If, if Pitt has one loss and Wake Forest is undefeated and, a couple of other things happen. Now, I think if Wake Forest go, runs the table, if any Power Five team runs the table, they're in. Right? I mean, I'll sit it out, but I mean, Wake Forest in the playoff. It doesn't sound. Oh, honestly, well, they knock Alabama out or Georgia out. You know, whichever one, of, whichever team doesn't win the SEC, is there any way the committee sides with Wake Forest over them? I. That's that's no. So I, I think you you need uh, what Georgia to beat Alabama and keep Alabama out of the picture entirely. Then maybe there would be room for Wake Forest, but uh, I, Wake Forest can beat anybody left in the ACC. I don't know because that, there's nobody left in the ACC. Would the committee? Would the committee? As here's the question then: Would the committee? They have a choice for the fourth spot. What, whatever happened one through three doesn't matter. They the your two choices for the fourth spot. Undefeated Cincinnati, undefeated Wake Forest. Yeah. Oh, man. Right? Could you imagine being Luke Fickle? You've done this. You've gotten up to this point, and it's freaking Wake, Wake Forest, Forest that keeps you out of the playoffs. Could you imagine? Hey, you, but this is this is all fun because it's not going to happen. There, there's, there's There would be just... holes punched into the wall of every single wall in the Cincinnati building, the, the football facilities, and – Luke Fickle would have multiple broken knuckles and that would not go well for his, uh, his, his walls, his fists. Um, not, not good. Uh, Nomad asks what, uh, should the NCAA clamp down on the release slash use of polls outside of the college football playoff? Uh, one, I think that would be unconstitutional. I, I don't know how you, how you get away with telling the AP they're not allowed to put out a top 25. Um, and the NCAA doesn't run the college football playoff either. So I don't know why they would stick their neck out there for a thing they have no control over. Yeah, I think it's up to the people to, the people are giving the polls the power, right? You're, you're, you're giving them, you're speaking it to existence into existence. How much does the committee look at the polls? I mean, they're not all that different when the two come out, they eventually, start to look exactly like each other and, and whether that's the the, the coaches thing. or the AP correcting their stuff. That's how it always um, is though. Yeah. You see the, the coaches and the AP completely radically change the week after the college football playoff comes out. Cause people like just they're sheep. Yeah. It shows you how little they, they, actually matter. <laughs> they all start to sync with their cycles. Basically. I have brought you up plenty of times, Stuart. Stop being jealous. 
the <laughs> they asked the good question. They they asked all the questions. Um, I know they put Arkansas at seven, but that's their constitutional right to put Arkansas at seven. <laughs> You don't have to pass an IQ test to get a you know a ballot. Uh, when uh, another one from one last one last question from Nomad. Um, when is the next major shakeup in college football? Uh, that's the question. Feel free to interpret that however you wish. Um, but that's the question. Well, I think that after what the twenty twenty three season is when the TV deals are up, or prior to I think it's after the twenty twenty three season. I'm so out of touch of the the off season talk because I'm now in season, right? And, and so, but but with the with the television stuff changing, there's going to be some more conference stuff, some realignment, the playoff expansion. Once everybody else has been able to slow the SEC down and get some rules in there, limiting the number of teams from one conference, and also having more networks be able to bid on it, and not just ESPN. I did see the thing today where the the committee is talking or whatever, you know, organization group or whatever is saying they'd rather have games off campus than on campus for playoffs. And it's like, of course you would. Right. Because you're all just fattening each other's wallets, patting each other's backs and keeping those uh, palms greased. And it's really pretty pitiful. There's no reason not to have on campus playoff games for at least the first round of a 12 team playoff. Yeah. Um, Blanking, uh, Dan, Dan Wetzel's death to the BCS, despite the fact that the BCS is dead or at least rebranded, um, still feels insanely relevant at times. Um, do you, how, how do you feel about what's, what's the big tens next move? Is it mm. West? Is it East? Is it, uh, is USC Oregon stuff carry any real weight to you? North Carolina rumor. Uh, sometimes you hear people say North Carolina and Virginia. Sometimes you have them rating the Pac-12 going to Oregon, USC. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Let's steer it. Yeah, we're real concerned about that alliance. Um, the. <laughs> I think the alliance does give them. UNC I is think. very relevant, especially considering the Big Ten cares a lot a lot about academics and they are huge in that and research and all of that as is Virginia as are two of the best think, public schools in the country. I think the problem with the ACC though, is I think their grant of rights goes to 2035 or something like that. Yeah. And it's a huge, so, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you, you hold, hold fast at 14 teams that Alliance, I, I, I would like to see them go down to eight conference games play two teams from the Alliance, you know, play in a Pac-12 team, play an ACC team that gives you 10 power five team, 10 power five games. And then you still have, you know, Texas and Alabama on all of these future schedules. So now you're looking at 11 power five teams and a 12 game schedule. I think that's awesome. And I don't think you have to worry about, gosh, that's too many, that's too many good teams. We could lose two games. You win your conference and you're in, you know? So I think this will give us better, in theory, better regular season games, but it's up to those schools to actually schedule those games. And it's up to the SEC to do the same. And we've seen how they do that. And I'm not talking about Mercer. You know, I'm talking right. about, you know, Florida leaving the state for a non-conference game at least once, you know, in, right. in, in a four decade span. Or when was the last time Bama played? I They, 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 they play very good teams, but they tend to do it either at home or at a neutral site. When was the last time Bama went out of conference to a legitimate opponent's actual stadium? Well, I think they did a Duke a few years back, perhaps a home and home. Tony. They did a home and home with Penn State. That was in a like while 2009, ago. 2010, yeah. when they knew what Penn State was by that time. And that was, you know, Joe Paterno, second, first, uh, second to last year, third to last year. And exactly obviously gangland. things weren't going well and Saban knew what he was doing. And now you're seeing Alabama schedule these home and homes, which tells you that Saban isn't going to be there much longer. Exactly. Yeah. We, we've had an ar ongoing argument. It really just mm -hmm. between all of us and one person in particular in the discord saying that there's zero chance in hell that Nick Saban is still 
with the team during that time frame. <laughs> Zero chance. All right, Tony, that's the end of the episode. I've already kept you for way too long. Um I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to do much in the way of like plugs and all that. Just like go, go to the, join the discord server, join all of these hooligans down here. And that's it. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. It's just a chat server. That's all it is. It's, it's a chat server. Um, it's fun. We hang out, come, come hang out with us. Um, Tony, as you are well aware, cause we've been doing it for since the beginning of the show, uh, all the way back to the ozone days and even pre ozone days for us. Um, we end every episode with a with a band from the state of Ohio. Um, do you have a band? I, you're you're a knower of music. You this is this is a thing. I I know about you. We have talked music on more than one occasion. Do you have a band for us? How about going back to the the '90s, which is about where music stopped for me, but not quite. You know, go. Let's go with uh, Tim Easton, a Tim Columbus Easton. local. Okay. Uh, and let let's go with uh, Just Like Home. All right. If I can't find this song, there'll be hell to pay. Tim Easton, you said just like home. Yep. All right. I'll make sure to write that down so I don't have to actually listen to my own podcast later. And uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Uh, this is Tim Easton. <laughs>